Hi guys, it's Holly here and welcome to the Strong Women podcast. The aim of this podcast is to interview strong women from all walks of life and take key learnings from their personal experiences. Now by saying strong, I don't exclusively mean strong physically. I'll be talking to women who are strong mentally, emotionally or simply women who have overcome odds throughout their lives. The key themes in each episode will be around fitness, mental health and business. I truly hope their stories inspire you and encourage you, and equally I hope you can take away valuable pieces of advice to practice in your own lives. Today's guest is Laura Hoggins, or you may know her as Biceps. Laura is a fully trained fitness coach and personal trainer who runs her own concept class, Lifted, at the Ministry of Sound Fitness. Born and raised in Surrey, Laura Hoggins developed her passion for lifting after discovering a CrossFit box in Hammersmith over three years ago. Inspired by the community of individuals whose priority was athletics and not their aesthetic, Laura quit her office job and moved into fitness full-time. Her career started under the tutelage of Ben Gotting at the Foundry, London, and she now teaches a mix of modified strongman, strength and conditioning circuits across the city at London's top fitness venues. Laura has worked with British Women's Lifting, Women in Sport and This Girl Can to spread a campaign that she supports that strong is not a size. What I love about Laura is that she's bridged the gap between what women have previously thought about weightlifting and the reality. I feel she's making it safer, more accessible and less intimidating. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Hi guys, so I'm here with Laura Hoggins. Hi Laura. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very good. Very excited for this. Good, yeah. That's a good sign. Not nervous? No, not yet. Depends <laughs> what you're going to ask me. <laughs> so we're going to start with a quick fire round. So the first thing that comes into your head, within reason. So the the best book you've ever read? Um, Adrian Mole. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's because, you know what? <laughs> It's, it, he reminds me a little bit of me. It's like a series of unfortunate <laughs> events going through life. Just trying your best and some funny things happen along the way. Um, yeah, I don't know why I thought of that. It's not even thought of that for years, but yeah. Yeah, age it's a book we'd have all read probably quite like 10 years ago or something. Showing my age, yeah. Dig it back out. Right, I'm right. <laughs> and what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Um, that it's not always about you. Um, one of the things that I find in life is that I get anxious about things that haven't even happened yet, like almost like this self-sabotage that could be in, in work, life, anything. And, um, and at the end of it, I kind of realised there wasn't anything so much to be worried about and no one else is really paying you any attention because they're thinking about themselves just as you are. So that was that's kind of a, a comforting bit of advice for me. That's so refreshing, isn't it? You know, like, or if you're going to an event and talking on a panel or what have you, or going to an important meeting, you can guarantee that everyone else is probably going through the same thoughts as you are, um, but they won't be thinking that you are. So yeah, you kind of got to get out of your head a little bit. Totally. It's a, a big in, in fitness as well. People get quite um, worried about coming to the gym or doing like group classes. I think, oh no, what if, what if I can't lift it? What if I'm not as good as everyone else? Everyone else is just trying to survive too. So yeah, trying to break down some barriers that it's not always about you. Everyone's just looking out for themselves, really. Yeah, I like that. Um, what's your morning routine? So um, I am up very early most days. My alarm goes 4.50 uh, most days. And um, over the last three years, um, a good friend of mine taught me how to meditate. Um, it's been an incredible journey of kind of finding out what goes on in my own head after probably spending years of trying to ignore what goes on in my own head. So I meditate in the morning for 10 minutes. Anyone says they don't have time to meditate in the morning needs to meditate more because it starts my day amazingly, just to have that clarity. Set my intentions for the day, as cheesy as that sounds, you know, I take every day as it comes and just do the best I can every day. And then I'm probably heading off to either train myself or off to work. 
Yeah. On the note of uh, meditation, it's, it is so important. And the, the hardest thing is that the people who either feel they don't need it or that it's really difficult are the ones that need it the most. Totally, yeah. Um, you know, the people who said, oh, I just can't do it because I can't switch off my mind. And you're like, mm. yeah, then you definitely need to meditate. Mm. And it does get easier over time. Agree. Um, yeah. And there are so many amazing apps out there, like with Headspace, that guide you. And, and also, you don't have to be good at everything. So you don't even have to be good at meditation. Yeah. You just have to do it. Exactly. And I think I've gone on a journey. I guess personally, I'm, I think of a lot about performance. So I wanted to be good at meditation. Like I want to be good at lifting. I want to be good at, you know, a good human. I should be good at meditation. I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> Honestly, like just being silent and trying to breathe and hearing other people breathe around me. It's like sex education all over again. I'm just <laughs> laughing. And then I kind of realized that was my natural response to kind of laugh it off as I don't want to be inside my own head. Mm. Um, And those that know a lot about meditation, you know, you can go on some incredible guided meditations and you can really think about things that you didn't even realize you thought about yourself, about things in life. And it just gives you that opportunity to have a moment of clarity because there is so much noise going on out there and, um, we tend to get distracted, guided by things that don't serve our purpose. So having a clear vision of what you want to achieve in life that day is is the best thing. Yeah. Um, what does happiness look like to you? Happiness is, uh, right now, I'm just enjoying what I'm doing, feeling satisfied personally, professionally, and just having my family around me. Honestly, like, uh, I think I've I've gone through life feeling like, I need to achieve, I need to be a certain level in, in corporate world um, to kind of reversing it all. Not reversing, I feel like I've progressed actually, but throwing it all in for something that I truly believe in is is where I'm at right now and it, it feels really good. You realise you don't need as much as you thought you did. Mm. Um, like, you know, corporate career, salary is great, but I, I didn't need it. I just want whatever I can to get through and feel satisfied in my in my job. And this is a good one for you. What does strong look like to you? What does strong look like? That's um, a couple of questions in itself because it doesn't really look like anything. And I think this is my my main realisation in that strong isn't just how much you can you can deadlift. Sure, that is important to me. That's, you know, my, my goal physically is to be as strong as I can, but it's not just about that. And I think the reason why I love weightlifting is it teaches you so much about life because you will not progress quickly in weightlifting. It takes a long time. And in order to, to lift more, you have to you have to go through a process and you have to improve tiny little bits. And it's not linear either. You're going to fail some horrendous lifts. You're going to turn up to the gym one day and just not feel like it. Um, other days, it's going to be amazing, you're screaming around, posting everything on Instagram that uh, you hit a PB. But yeah, I think strong to me is is being resilient mentally and, and physically and knowing that what you're working towards is more of a long-term goal. Um, and I think it's it's strength also in your conviction. There's a, as I said, there's a lot of noise going around at the moment and it's easy to get distracted in other people's opinions or what's the most acceptable uh, you know opinion on, on a topic and actually going, hey, this is what I think and having strength of your your conviction, your passion, that says a lot to me. Nice. Really good. So, Laura, to anyone who doesn't know who you are, in your own words, who are you and what do you do? So, um, I'm Laura Hoggins. I'm a PT um, in London and I've not always been, I've not always done this. So, I've got a 10-year corporate career. I went to university, studied business studies in marketing um, I wanted to be a PE teacher. I wanted to be a football coach. I used to play football for Chelsea uh, under 16s when I was a kid. So I was always doing all the, the boys sports uh, as, a, as an only child. I did judo, canoeing, football, rugby, cricket, anything that wasn't girly, to be honest. And then um, as I got to college, I was like, oh, no, maybe now I need to, to have a proper job. You know, can you really have a career in health and fitness? Probably not. Um, there's not the opportunity. I don't believe in health and fitness that there is now back, back then when I was going. So I started a corporate career. I did five years at, um, a, a company called Unilever who home are home to many amazing brands, Dove, Lynx, all of that jazz did marketing for them. Then I packed it all in and I moved to the Cayman Islands. 
So if you, if you don't know uh, where that is, it is, um, it is just underneath Miami next to Jamaica. It's um, a, a British colony, an expat community. My parents have spent eight years there. And that for me was probably one of the turning points in my life because I left my stressful corporate career. I had um, a horrendously upsetting breakup of about 10 years. I was uh, in a relationship with uh, a guy. We broke up. I was at my, probably my heaviest in, in weight and I was just sad. Moved to the Cayman Islands and I realised I didn't really need much in life to be happy. Um, I worked with stingrays, um, with jet skis, with boats and I was just in, I didn't wear any shoes, a jet ski to work. I had a load of male friends, hung out on the beach all day and I kind of found myself again. Um, and after spending a year there, I remember sitting on the beach with my mum uh, as I was going home back to London. She said, what have you learned in the last year? I said, I've, I've learned to be happy with myself. Went back to London, went, to, uh, did a, continued my corporate career at L'Oreal. And, um, and then I was like, one day I'm going to chuck this all in. I'm going to, I'm going to work in fitness. Maybe it took me a little bit longer than I, I hoped, but I finally did it. And, um, now I guess I'm, I'd like to, to be a representative to all kind of women that have gone through a journey, um, who I have had their, I feel like every female's had a, a struggle with themselves, with their, what they see in the mirror. And I'm only now, after working so hard on myself, able to go, I'm really happy and content with who I am, what I look like. And um, that's what I kind of want to spread and share and teach people to, to lift weights because that's good for you too. <laughs> but you're doing that with a with a purpose really um the Cayman Islands wow yeah I did not know that at all yeah it's cool isn't it that's mad I know I think a lot of my friends thought I lived in Tenerife um which is not <laughs> Grand Cayman but um yeah it's it's a it's a place that is like second home to me I've been there every year of my of my life and um it's just one of those things where it's like in terms of the size I think it's got about 50,000 people on it now um, there's one cinema, uh, a couple of gyms, a big some hotel chains. I think it's ten miles by eight. And uh, I remember when I first got there, I was like, "Oh my god, I saw blah 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 again." And I made it like a real thing, and they're like, "You're going to see them every day." It's so small. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I've seen you again. And they're like, "Oh, how long has she been here?" Um, but it's just it's uh, my next door neighbour. He was uh, an old Caymanian guy, and you know, just hanging out with him. He didn't need anything in life. He went out and did fishing every day. He didn't wear any shoes either. And he doesn't have, you know, we didn't have Instagram. There was no likes. It was just face-to-face -face interaction and, and people doing what they love. And there was no stress, like, honestly, mm. zero. It was amazing. Um, parts of it do get a little boring, just in case you're thinking of completely mm -hmm. emigrating. I did see the same fish every day, and that got a bit annoying because everyone's like oh my god it's fish and I'm like oh yeah um but yeah no it was it's incredible and it, I, I guess it just in a world where we've got access to so much I was so out of that bubble mm. and it, it just I had to connect with myself with people on a, on a real basis um face to face and it just it just made me appreciate everything so much more so going back then to um, when you were younger, why do you think you gravitated towards the sports that we would consider, or in your own words, were sort of more masculine? Um, so being an, an only child, um, I didn't really have, I didn't really have it, like any influence other than my male cousin. So my, my cousin James, um, he is a week and a day uh, older than me and I spent all my time with him. And when you're that age and you grow up with someone like that, I just wanted to do everything he did. And it's probably hugely annoying for him. <laughs> but if James started Canoe Club, I was like, I wanted to do that. So I basically followed everything that he did. He started judo, annoying cousin Laura turns up next week, all the gear, no idea. <laughs> and I just felt like it was that kind of team community that I just loved. I loved doing activity, exercise, moving around for a purpose from a very early age like we weren't just fighting we were learning how to move better we were learning how to respect other people um you know like I was, I was pretty decent at judo and then I started playing football with him and then I was the only girl I started going to football camps I was the only, I used to get the award to all the boys annoyance they used to get the the, the player the, the player of the week used to go to me I think maybe because they felt they had to I don't know maybe no. I was all right but <laughs> it was just this amazing thing because it was a female in a man's 
world, wow. right? And they'd go, partner up. And they'd go, oh, I don't want to go with the girl. Oh, it's so <laughs> annoying. And I'd be there going, oh, okay, whatever, guys. Mm-hmm. I was, like, last to be picked. And then I, they, I think as you get a bit older, guys start to go, oh, gosh, she's still here. Maybe we'll talk to her now. And, um, yeah, then they were like, oh, yeah, we'll go with her. She's okay. And I just, yeah, I just loved loved football. So at school, um, I, there was a coach that said, hey, I'm, I'm the manager of Chelsea Ladies. Do you want to come and try? And I did, and I loved it. I was maybe not, I wasn't up there in the best of the team. Um, a lot of the girls actually I played with are hugely successful. They play for England now. Um, I took a slightly different route because I got to the stage where I was like, I could either do education or really focus on sport. And I chose education, which is absolutely cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think it was just chasing him and just finding, I just loved all these sports. Um, and it just made me feel good just achieving something as a team. Mm. And then I found it again later in life. And so from a career point of view right now, what do, what do you do? What's a typical week like for you? So a typical week, um, I spend the majority of my time at the moment teaching uh, group classes. So I teach a, a variety of studios around London, and I guess I teach the, the more strength-based style um, of training, which is, is amazing. It's kind of really growing in popularity. Um, I teach um, a, a modified strongman class at an incredible gym called The Foundry in Vauxhall. If you haven't been, please go. City Strongman, it's incredible. Um, and that really is like at the stone lifts, prowler pushes, log lifts, all of the stuff you see Eddie Hall doing on, on the TV. We don't have a lorry just yet, but mm-hmm. maybe soon. Um, so I'll, I'll be up early. I spend a lot of time programming um, those sessions. I teach probably between 15 to 25 people per session. A lot of them are members. Some of them have been doing it for years uh, and there's an incredible community there. I also uh, teach and I'm head trainer at uh, the Ministry of Sound Fitness. So kind of gone full circle for me. I used to be a bit of uh, a one in in the nightlife, to, to, call it, <laughs> to, to say it politely. Um, so to go from Ministry of Sound in the night to kind of waking up when I'd come in um, to go and set up for a class is, is kind of come full circle for me. It's amazing. It's a really cool space. And it's kind of all about the experience, kind of losing yourself in, a, in, in the workout. Uh, and then the last one is at uh, KXU in Chelsea, where I teach um, some kind of athletic performance classes, the games, hit and run, uh, like treadmill running, and again, some kind of circuit-based modified strongman. And I teach at the moment 15 of those a week, and it's a lot. Like you think, oh, I only work 15 hours a week, but as you probably know, that's not all that goes into it. You know, it's, it's the planning, um, you know, it's, it takes a lot energy-wise. I know I'm not doing the class, but I am, I'm in there with you, trying mm-hmm. to motivate, encourage, and, and I guess the main thing for me is making sure people move well. Um, one of the things that I've seen or I've experienced in group classes is um, that's cool that you can lift that bro but your back is like a prawn so this is one of the the biggest things for me is is each of these classes allow for the time to really spend time explaining how to move well it's not always about the biggest weight it's about you know your range of 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 movement and and lifting safely Mm -hmm. and doing it properly exactly yeah yeah. So it's mainly for you, strength and conditioning, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And why do you think that you've ended up with that? Because I'll be honest, you know, you're sort of you've almost filled a gap in the market. Women started getting a little bit interested in weight training, but you know, you've probably heard this a million times as well. Because we definitely have, like, oh, I'm really scared of doing heavy weights and bulking up, and then we're like, that's not going to happen. Yeah. And they sort of dip their toe, but it's still an area that's heavily dominated by men. Yeah. And women are interested but not sure where to start. And then I feel like you've come along and you're like the poster girl for it. Like, look how amazing it is. And like, look how much fun she's having and look how much she enjoys it and is passionate about it. And I, yeah, I feel like you've kind of plugged that hole. Well, that's very kind of you. I think my where I, I first fell in love with it was doing CrossFit. And I'm, I, I don't co- coach CrossFit, um, but it's how, how I how I train. And I think people see, as you said, they see, you know, I guess what I post on Instagram or come and experience it training with me. And they realize that I'm, I'm not out there to be better than anyone else. It's for me, it's my therapy. It's to have fun. Um, I want to do well just as much as I want someone else, um, to do well. And I think, 
I mean, don't get me wrong. I've experienced some very awkward conversations and thank God I've got a thick skin because I've, I could have been very offended by some of the things um, people have said to me about weightlifting and, and, and me physically. Um, I'll give an example. I won't name where it was, but I had um, a girl come to my class and she looked a little bit stressed, wasn't really sure, she couldn't really stand still. We were about five minutes before we starting. So I approached her and I said, are you okay? You look like, you know, are you new? Is there any questions you have? And she looked at me and she said, hey, listen, I've had a really shit day and all I want to do is burn calories. I'm looking to get like the long and lean look. She looked me up and down. She went, I don't want to look like you. Will training with you make me look like you? And I could have yeah. absolutely lost it. But I took a big deep breath and I, do you know what? I felt sorry for her because I thought she doesn't know. Yeah. She doesn't realise. She's uneducated. And what I actually said back was, oh no, you won't look like me because I'm significantly stronger than you and we'll be lifting very different weights. Um, there is much more to it than you think. You know, just doing a couple of thrusters, hun, is not going to turn you into the Hulk. Um, resistance training is really good for you. If you complement it with a great diet, long and lean is exactly where you're going. And she just looked at me and I think she just couldn't believe uh, she was so shocked. She left after the warm up, um, and that's fine because really I can't yet. be for everyone. This is another one of, of my learnings is that I can tell you what I love. I can tell you how to do it. I can invite you to do it. I can tell you it's accessible to everyone and, and really it is, but you've got to want to do it. Mm. And um, it does take, it takes balls to, to step into the studio and, and, you know, strongman training. God, that sounds really hard. And what I hear a lot is people say, I'll start training and then I'll come to your class. And I think this is one of the biggest things I want to tackle is that that's part of the journey. Just start somewhere. Um, and, you know, people see on Instagram, social media, whatever, oh, you know, if I'm not going to lift as much as she can, or they look at me and go, oh, you know, she's doing that, I won't be able to do it. I want to try and break down the barriers to it. And I'm very fortunate in that I have such a spectrum of, of women and men that come to my class. And I think that is, you know, a credit to, to I guess, myself and the studios I work at is that we, you know, every single movement is progressible, progressible, and we're just training together as a team. That's what's important. I've got people that can't even do one air squat, and and I've watched their journey over whatever four six months, and they're doing so well. I have a uh, one guy that used to come to my class um, at ministry, and he was he came to me and said, "Listen, I'm in pretty bad shape. I've just um, I'm in recovery. I'm in remission from cancer, and I, I want to get strong. And I feel like training with you will help me get there." And I was like, "This is amazing." You, yeah, absolutely. If you come here every week and, and you and you listen, you progress, that's absolutely what you're doing. And six months later, honestly, he moves so well. He's lifting well. He looks happy. That's why I do it. Hi, guys. Sorry to interrupt this podcast. I wanted to mention that if you're enjoying this episode, I'd really appreciate a review of it once you've finished listening. You can do this on my website, on SoundCloud or on iTunes. Furthermore, why not share it with all your friends and your family on social media? Let's spread the strong women ethos as far and wide as possible. Now back to the podcast. I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Yeah, I think the struggle, going back to what you were saying before, is that there is this perception, and I don't, I'm not 100% sure where it's come from. I guess it's because the only, in the past, the only women that we would see that lifted very heavy would be like female powerlifters. Yeah. And so everyone sees that and they think, if I weight, if I weight train, that's what I'll look like. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we, we've talked about this on the podcast before, actually, like we've had very similar conversations here in that the trend in the area that we're in at the moment, which is sort of Fulham, Chelsea, the trend around here is that long and lean look. Yeah. And I don't know where it's come from. Um, you know, people want to look like they exercise, but also not look like they exercise. I want to be slim, but I don't want to be muscly. 
And one of the things that we get a lot here is someone will come in and they'll sit down and they'll say, I want to be strong, but I don't want to be like this strong. And for people who can't see me, I'm (laughs) using my hand, which they do to show, like point to my arms. Um, And they'll say, you know, like, I don't want to see muscle. Yeah. And, um, and again, it's really difficult to not be offended, but then also be like, you can only wish (laughs) that, you know, this has taken a long time to get strong. Um, And also... Yeah, like it, with those amazing female powerlifters, you know, that's taken a long time, like graft, hard work, like a fantastic diet um, to, to get that way. You're not going to turn into that yeah. by doing, you know, a class or two a week, lifting a few a few weights. Yeah. And it's breaking, and it is breaking that down. And, and there haven't been many role models um, that, that do have, I guess, what's considered more socially normal's not the right word but mainstream that lift weights um so yeah yeah, it's really difficult to chip that away and how amazing that you're experiencing women who who actually maybe already know that or you're helping to change that perception yeah and I definitely think I've I've witnessed it with lots of different people that it's that perception has changed like people always feel a little bit nervous coming into it because it's that you know what if I can't what if I can't lift it or that person was lifting a certain amount everyone is individual and unique and you know it's it's more around the experience of of trying to trust the process of your own body and doing what I do will not make you look like me like as you well know nutrition is probably plays a a bigger part of it so yes you know I'll eat in a calorie surplus because I want to get stronger and I need the energy to do so you know I, I don't think you're eating the same as me so and you don't have the same genetics as me, so mm, oh, different. probably not. So why do you feel so strongly that strength and conditioning and weight training is so amazing for women? I guess um, the if we think about the science behind strength and conditioning, you know, improving your physical health is, is so important. It's laying down the foundations of a stronger body for years to come, you know. I don't want to be 55 and feeling like, oh God, you know, I wish I'd looked after my body a bit more. It's not always about, it's not always about the kind of the here and now it's, it's training your body for for life. Um, And many years ago, before I was as educated as I am now, I, I, all I wanted to do was be thin because um, I grew up in the eighties and my poster girl was Kate Moss um and everyone wanted to look like Kate Moss so I'm like oh my god I don't have a thigh gap my thighs are footballers legs this is going to be tough right but I'll, I'll give it a go so I've kind of gone through like not eating eating the wrong things running my life away that I didn't really enjoy I, I ran uh, two marathons because in my head that was a really big commitment that I had to do it because I'm competitive so I was going to do it and then I had to get the, the, the running in I'd weigh myself every day and be like, actually disappointed if I've like, not lost any weight. What happened when I got to that goal weight? I wasn't happy. It, there was, I, I kind of, it was a sad realisation that there was so much more that I needed in order to, to kind of fulfil that, that happiness of me personally. Yeah, I'd got to my goal weight. Brilliant. Well done me. But I, I didn't really enjoy the process. Was it sustainable? Probably not. Didn't like running, so what was I going to do then? Mm. Um, and then I found kind of strength and conditioning that made you feel like a, like a complete boss. Like, Badass. yeah, it's mm. so good. And as a female doing it, it was a little different. And at the start, you know, my it was kind of like, what are you doing, hulking all these weights around? That looks weird. And it was when CrossFit had just started. And I kind of just just fell in love with the feeling of it and that small that small progress. Um, so yeah, so I think I think for me it's just I'm the healthiest I've ever been. Am I the thinnest? No, but have I got loads of energy? Yes. Do I have a lust for life like never before? Absolutely. And I think that's got a lot to do with my my lifestyle. Um, and don't get me wrong, like nutrition, oh my God, that's got such a big part of it. And I wasn't as educated then as, uh, as I was now. And um, I remember I, I, finished cross, I used to finish CrossFit, like whatever, 6 a.m. before I went to work. And then I'd have like a whole thing of pineapple because I thought in my head, that's kind of inoffensive. It's fruit, well done me. Mm-hmm. But it didn't really help. Mm-hmm. And I found physically, 
you know that kind of people describe it as that skinny fat I was just like what am I I don't feel very I don't feel strong enough to kind of do functional life and that that's for me what the, the right mix of strength and conditioning is and it's not for everyone I, I'm not going to sit here and think say I think everyone should lift weights you've got to do what feels right for you body weight training's amazing you know to master to truly master you know perfect movement of your own body that's amazing forget dumbbells kettlebells whatever do that first mm. make sure that you're moving well you're healthy you're feeling good and then you start to introduce the fun stuff yeah and do you think that there is a, there is a change do you think there's been a bit of a shift do you see more women wanting to get involved in strength and conditioning totally and i think um there are so many women i, I couldn't even start to name them all now but you know including yourself where we all have maybe had this personal realization of wow I feel amazing doing this and if I can make it my life's work to to share it with another person man or woman um I'm, I'm gonna do it and I, there was um a recent article in women's health they asked me to contribute to it, um and it was what they asked females what is your body goal and 86 percent of women said to get strong and to me that was incredible and I was a bit surprised yeah I I knew the evolution was was uh was fast but that was a lot and you know I think I've kind of seen it over the last three years people like okay right I'm ready to get strong but I don't really know how now they know how to do it I think it's more nutritionally they need to be a bit more educated how do you you know this new metabolic rush that you get after you've done a a weightlifting session how do you then refuel and how do you eat to complement it that's kind of, I think, where we're going next. But it, it's it's been amazing, and people feel genuinely proud to say, "I am, I am strong." You know, I can lift this, mm. and it's more about what your body can do. And I know you talk a lot about performance over aesthetics. I used to just have aesthetic goals because I didn't know that my body could do the stuff that it was yeah. doing. I just didn't know. So I was fortunate that I found the right community. I think what's lovely as well is that as female empowerment grows and as sort of feminist, sort of modern feminism is growing, I also feel that strength is is alongside that. Women are starting to feel like I don't just have to be, I don't just have to be pretty and skinny anymore. Like I can just be strong. It doesn't have to just be the boys that get to be strong and get to do all the fun stuff and throw mm. shit around. Like I get to do that now as well. And no one's going to call me a boy. Like I. For me, you know, I used to get called often like you've got a, ma- a, a body like a man. Um, and I, you know, back then I used to find that quite um, difficult, or like shoulders like a man. And actually mm. now I could, I don't, no one would say that to me anymore. Um, but also I don't really care. Like I just want to be able to lift stuff and throw stuff and like put stuff in the attic without hurting my back. Yeah. And, you know, and we, it, we don't just have to be pretty and skinny and flaky anymore and girly. Yeah. We, we are allowed to be strong. Yeah. Which I think is amazing. Yeah, totally. And I, like, if you'd asked me five years ago, would I want to look, you know, the, the way I do now, I'd go, oh my God, no. You know, I, I just wanted to be thin. And I just, it's almost like I can't, I don't even understand who that person was. It's been such a, a journey. And like, when people say to me, oh, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you do it? Like, I I don't even, I can't even explain. I just am content. Mm. And if I can, if I can play a role in sharing, I'm really cool with how I am. You you know, you can think of my physique, what you like, but I'm cool with it. So if, if you, you know, if you want to look a certain way, that's cool. I've got aesthetic goals as well, but it's not, it doesn't supersede performance because Mm -hmm. that's what, that's what lights my my soul really i think it's really important as well that there is that there are images of women with all different types of bodies now on social media whereas if we think back maybe last year or the year before the women who dominated the wellness industry on social media would probably be the first to admit that they've got very similar body shapes yeah. so we're all looking at that thinking you know what well, I don't look like her a can I work in the fitness industry totally, or yeah. be like am I maybe not fit if I don't have the same body shape as them whereas actually now we're starting to realize that you know you can be healthy at any size um and fit people's bodies very massively just like the general public's bodies very massively yeah. um and so you don't need to feel left out or inadequate if your body doesn't match 
the shapes of the people we've been exposed to. Yeah, absolutely. And I think size doesn't always mean strength either. Like if you were to put me in a lineup with some of the girls I train with, maybe I'm a little heavier or I'm broader or whatever than some of them, and they can outlift me. So it's, it's, you just can't make these assumptions on, on someone's, someone's size. Like strength isn't a specific type. Um, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, I mean, I'm in awe of some, some girls that I train with. They're like, honestly, they can, they can probably lift double what I can and we're about the same. So you just, you just can't judge. That's why it's such a shame when people bring out books that basically say, like, do this to look like me. And genetics plays such a huge part. Like, you could literally live with this person, eat the same food as them, train the same as them, sleep the same as them, and still have a completely different body shape. Yeah, exactly. And I think, like, back going back many years, I've followed plans, mm. you know, training like blah blah blah, you know, because I'm looking at that person and I'm like, right, I want to look like that. I want to do what they do. And now we're at the sad realization where you can do, as you say, exactly that and you could be nowhere near. So for me it is about giving people the the knowledge and education to make sensible choices for them. Um and it, it's not about doing it in, you know, 7 days, 30 days. Yes, if you want to make a change to, to your body, you're going to have to, to start tweaking some things in your training, your nutrition, and then you might come up to a point where you're very happy and that's, that's maintenance for you. Mm. So I think, I think it's more around educating people on what's sustainable. I see too much restriction, you know, like I saw some, something skinny sprinkles or something, oh. um, something I commented on. Um, Were you watching Love Island by any chance? I was, and I was <laughs> livid. I don't want to swear, but I literally, I looked at the TV, I went, fuck off. I so didn't just see that. I, rewi- I rewinded it. That's not a word. Rewound It'll it. Do. Yeah. Do. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I feel, I was like, no way. So hang on. You're telling me to the, drink this drink that's going to expand in my stomach to make me less hungry. And it's in the middle of Love Island. Like, honestly, I went, I went mad. Um, Miranda, lovely Miranda at the Metro wrote an article about it because I think it's important that we, you know, I don't want to be that person that's, you know, outing people and slagging people off, but you can't tell people that. Mm-hmm. Like, that's such a bad message mm. um, because there are people out there, and I was one of them many years ago, that they are relatively unhappy in their bodies. They want to do something about it. And they haven't got a clue where to start, mm. and we shouldn't we shouldn't uh, maximize on on that by selling them something that is not going to help them. Yeah. Sure, if you did it for seven days, if you have a detox tea, you will shit yourself to half a stone less. Well done. Yeah, you've smashed Ibiza. Then what? You know what? What do you what do you do? And you and I both know that in that short space of time, you're probably only losing water weight. Mm or depleting your glycogen stores, and that's not healthy. Um, so, yeah, for, for me, it's, a, it's about we have, to, we have to talk about what we do as used from our experience, but try and guide people on how to make the best choices for them. And it's really difficult because it is like a sea of bullshit out there. I mean, we talked off of the podcast earlier on about this, but um, and, and for the listeners who maybe don't know this, so um, my last year, well, no, this year actually, sorry, um, my book was coming out at the very beginning of January and um, the way that initially it was going to come out just before Christmas um, and the way that it works was trying to match it so that if the supermarkets were going to feature it, which they were thinking about doing, um, it, they change over their stock just after Christmas so just before New Year so we sort of timed it around there and um, you know it it was the main premise of it is that it's basically calling bullshit on the fact that there are quick fixes because there really aren't and and once we stop trying to lose this weight in eight weeks or like how to you know lose half your body weight in seven days once we realize that that's actually that if if someone's claiming that then it is false if, if it sounds too good to be true it's definitely too good to be true because that is not how your body works it wouldn't allow that and um, because it would worry that you're dying and um so we were pitching the book as like look this is the antidote to these diet books in january you know we owe it to women to actually just tell them the truth we're not selling them the dream we're explaining like this is the science behind how your body works and the feedback from you know the press and and 
things at supermarkets like that was like that's not what women want to hear about like they do want to be told here's how to look like me here's how to burn you know lose weight real quick because I ate too much over Christmas and so supermarkets didn't stock it you know the newspapers stopped I don't want to call her out but like Chloe Maidley body blitz things like that you know stuff that had a time scale on it and it, so it's really difficult as a consumer to navigate that sea of bullshit because on the one hand you've got us saying like look that it's not going to work just so you know that's not how your body works and then on the flip side there's probably far more in the wellness industry telling them no we can you know do this for a couple of weeks and you'll look shit hot um and so it's difficult and you just I think it's just always realizing that if it's telling you it's going to change quickly it isn't true yeah. because that's not what happens it's like a lifelong this has to be you for life yeah. not you for two weeks before Ibiza and then you come back and like now what now what do I do yeah exactly and I think you know these these quick fixes um they they can you know these before and after photos that you see yes they can have an impact you can't deny that but then what happens and, and this is the thing is you can't do you keep it off no because you've not learned any new habits You've not understood anything more about how your body works. You've just restricted it um, and your body has reacted in a certain way and then is going to go back to try and keep you alive. Mm -hmm. That's literally what it is. Um, and I think if I also think about the, the flip side in there is an amazing abundance of new places, new ways to train in London and it's become like fun. It's like social, right? So people on social media are now feeling pressure to keep up with the keep up with everyone because everyone's training so hard if you believe social media I'm in the gym all day long <laughs> just training and lifting which is not the case mm -hmm. um so there's you know there's a there's an overtraining fear as well and you gotta you gotta think about the long-term sustainability of that so not only is it on nutrition but it's you know if you're doing hit six or seven days a week your central nervous system is crying and if you're doing that leaving, rushing to your desk, having a coffee, sitting down, you know, sat on a chair, inactive most of the day, at some point that's going to come crashing down as well because I've been there, I, I've, I've done it as well. You think the more you dedicate to training, the better the results. Not the case. Mm. So it's kind of like each individual, you've got you to treat differently, you've got to build this, the, the foundations in, in strength and mobility And yeah, you've got to do a bit of hard work in conditioning if you, you know, if you want to develop your, your CV with a, you know, the right supportive nutrition. It's a lot. It's complex and it's all individual. So having this kind of one size fits all mm. plan, um, I don't believe necessarily works. And even if you do do it and you see some results, there's always going to be someone out there that goes, nah, that's bullshit or you look better before, you know. <sighs> You just got to do it for you. Mm. And, you know, if you feel good and it's sustainable, cool. I, I'm, I'm not judging. There'll be loads of women listening, I think, that will be thinking, I would love to go throw some weights around and I would love to feel super strong, but the weights area in the gym just completely freaks me out or I just don't know where to start. What would your advice be? Yeah, so I, this is I get this a lot. Mm -hmm. People message me and say, I really want to, but I, I don't know where to go or, you know, I think I'm not going to be the strongest or I'm going to go to the gym, but the weights area is usually surrounded by men and I don't know what I'm doing. So I guess I would um, initially find a place where you feel kind of safe and, and comfortable having your first experience. And I'm fortunate enough that I get a lot of people come to me because I am kind of the more accessible version of it because um kind of we 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 show that everything is is progressible or regressible to any ability social media might tell you a different story but the, the people that we have in is is from all abilities from like literally nothing I would also maybe consider you know if you're going to the gym for the first time don't be afraid to like ask for an induction and find someone that you like you feel comfortable with and just ask loads of questions so th these are my goals what would you recommend and kind of seek advice from actual fitness professionals and see them face to face. I think it's very challenging to kind of to kind of look at what other people are doing and try to to, to copy it. Um, and start with the basics, I would say. So, 
if you are, you know, if you don't have the ability to get a PT, that's cool too. Find somewhere that's like a like a get started plan that masters the basics of of normal body weight movements like your squat, um, kind of like anything that is kind of like push pull movements. You know, even just mastering a press up doesn't sound very glamorous, exciting. It takes ages to to get it right. Um, you can practice this at home in your living room, and I think there's a lot of resources available that you know you can get a good a good session at home. Once you feel like you've mastered the basics. Then you can start bringing in some some resistance, some weights, some training, and I, I just think, for me, where I found my passion is within group training, because the likelihood is in that class there's someone else that's shitting themselves just as much as you are, and don't be afraid to make a friend. You know, every everyone finds their community somewhere. Try a few studios. There's loads of like um, first week introductory offers. Find what you like and and stay there mm. um because there will be people out there just like you starting the the journey at very different stages i think for lots of people as well one of the things we get asked about a lot is you know when you go to the gym and there's lots of different pieces of machinery and people are a little bit nervous to spend a, a while like getting themselves set up on there reading the materials that are attached that show them how to do it you know what muscles is it gonna um activate and they're nervous because they think that everyone's looking at them thinking she's not done that before yeah. whereas actually like i still go into gyms now where there might be a, sh- a machine that i've never used before yeah totally and i've seen so many different gyms and i'll and i'll have to have a look and it so it doesn't no one's going to be looking at you thinking oh here's a newbie she's yeah. what she's doing let's watch her fuck it up yeah like they'll genuinely just think everyone's just doing their own thing I think that is the biggest misconception no one's watching you um, because they're too busy doing their own stuff yeah totally and I think it's just keeping that in your mind like it might be really scary the first time you go around every piece of equipment and read all the info and it might be a really it might be a really long session but you only have to do it once and then you know what you're doing 100% and even like you know working with things like kettlebells it's amazing because you can do lots of different movement patterns with resistance You can use them, you know, in high repetition for, you know, CV training and you can find a little space in the gym, get on with your own thing, you know, find a little 20 minute workout and and you're done. Um, And you're right. You know, it is very rare that anyone is is looking at you. Um, You know, everyone's everyone's getting on with it with their own jam. So it takes a lot of balls. I get it. But you've got to start somewhere. So go in, make that first step and, you know, you will definitely not regret it. And we're not there to be sexy and we're not there to pull. Like we're Oh my there God, to... I look terrible. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time. And that, and you know, you know what? It's realising that none of us look good when we exercise. It's, we're not supposed to. The bodily functions that come with it are, you know, not conducive with sexiness, unless that's your bag. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's fine. Like, if you look in your eyes terrible at the gym, everyone else looks terrible as well. Yeah, totally. Like... I remember I'd, I'd competed earlier this year in a, in a strong women competition and I was like, here we go. Can't wait to see the photos because I just knew it would just be like, oh, okay. There was one, I was um, running, not running, trying to run with a, a yoke, like a big uh, yoke frame. I reckon three or four chins were captured. <laughs> and you know what? I kind of looked at it and I just looked, I was like, that's kind of funny, but wow, I'm proud of myself. And I, to me, it didn't, you know, maybe a few years ago, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm never posting that. Look at my 500 chins. But that was just effort to me. That looks like effort. And I trained for it and I loved it. I enjoyed the day. So how I look like, I don't care. And I enjoyed posting it as well on Instagram because everyone else thought it was funny as well. I want and to it's, see it now. it's important. But I just, for me, it's important because I don't look great when I train. I don't know who does unless you're not really putting that much effort in. Exactly. The facials are are extreme but I just think it's funny (laughs) yeah exactly and and like you said it means you're trying your hardest yeah so um to finish if you could go back and talk to your I don't know 18 20 year old self what fitness advice would you give them yeah so I think it is for me I would have said hey Laura where you're at now you might not like but in order to make a change, you've got to start somewhere and, and it's going to take time. And I think, you know, in in the, the current conversation around fat shaming, body shaming, 
everyone has the right to be respected, represented, whatever body size or shape they are. However I look, you know, yes, at one point when I was younger, I would definitely have described myself as, as fat. I was overweight. I knew it. I didn't need anyone else to tell me. I knew. What I didn't know was how to get out of it because I was unhappy in in life and, you know, a few life uh, lifestyle circumstances had put me in that position and I was, I was uneducated. So if I'd have been able to tell myself that it took time and it's about different lifestyle changes in order to make small bits of progress, that would have saved me 10 years of yo-yoing. I've tried every single diet, paleo, keto. I did the body coach actually. And to be, to be fair to it, it was probably the one that educated me most around nutrition um, in, in, uh, in comparison to everything else I used to do, which was not eat, which was not a good idea. Mm. And, um, yeah, it was about kind of building the foundations of what a healthy lifestyle was like at the time, all I wanted to do was just, I just wanted to be thin and that doesn't happen overnight. And, you know, from, from now what I know, I would have told myself to find something I loved, something physical something active that I love because at the time I kind of wasn't playing football sport whatever but it doesn't have to be complicated if weightlifting isn't your thing that's cool it's finding something that makes you active um and you know makes you feel kind of proud to every day to kind of get up fuel your body for its function and if you can't deadlift 100 kilos that's all right in your daily life maybe your job doesn't require you to do that so don't worry so much about what anyone else is doing find what works for you and just stick at it and if you don't see the results in one week two weeks four weeks that's all right too because the good shit takes time and I've only just come to realize that over the past few years like even in my classes you know people say oh I was you know I was using the 10 kilo dumbbells for a press and I just feel like it's going to take me a while to get to the 12 I know it takes time. So you just got to keep going, fail a little bit. You'll turn up one day not wanting to do it. Another day you'll be full of enthusiasm. You just got to commit to the process. And if you do that, the results will come, like guaranteed. It's, it's a commitment to prioritizing yourself. And um, I didn't do that. And now you do. Thank God. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Better late like than never, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Okay, thanks so much, Laura, for being on the podcast. And I hope that's been really helpful for you guys and it might have inspired you to try something new um, or something that you've been tempted to try but just been a little bit nervous. Uh, We'll put all of the notes in the show notes, uh, so how to get hold of Laura, how to follow her, how to see her amazing shots um, of what you could be doing or what you could build up to. And if you've enjoyed this and or you know someone who you think might enjoy it, please do share it on your social media or you can leave me or Laura a comment in the uh, in the reviews. That would be really helpful. And I hope that you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong Women podcast. If you have any feedback on today's topic or your own advice, please do let us know on social media or leave us a review on iTunes or SoundCloud. Did you know we also have an online plan that incorporates all the elements I believe create a strong, healthy, happy body? The Model Method Online is an eight-week holistic fitness plan incorporating mental health and nutrition support. Born from a frustration that all online plans are weight loss or aesthetic based, our online plan aims to improve the relationship that you have with your body. Go and try it for free now. The link is in the show notes and stay strong.